Good morning. Welcome to Mondays in the Psalter. I'm Pastor Vandercook. Today we look at the fourth section of Psalm 119 entitled Daleth, the fourth letter in the Hebrew alphabet, as we continue to work through this very long, the longest by far of all the Psalms in the, uh, in the Psalter, Psalm 119. This is verses 25 through 32. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your just decrees before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. It's true for all of us, of course, that uh, even as we have been baptized in our God's children, we still cling to the dust. And what the Psalter means, uh, the psalmist means by that here, is that we still cling to the things that the old Adam craves. We still cling to those uh, sins that dog us, those pet sins that we have. Uh, and so rather than putting the dust behind us, um, leaving those sins behind us, we still cling to them. We still cling to them at times. And here we confess that in verse 25, the very first uh, verse in this section. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. Uh, and then what follows the next verse, when I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. The fact is that we cling to the dust. We cling to these old sins. Uh, but we do, on the other hand, uh, we turn to the word of God. When I told of my ways, you answered me. That is, we confess these sins because we know that God is a forgiving God and that he wants us to confess those sins, that he may forgive us of those sins. That's the difference between uh, the converted and the unconverted. One who clings to the dust and is not a child of God doesn't care to tell God of his sin. Instead, he tries to continue to conceal it, uh, to keep it hidden, because he feels that God, he may feel that God is an angry judge that will not forgive him, which shows that he doesn't trust in Christ, the one who is going to forgive him. Or he may not care about it anyway, so he's just going to cling to it no matter what. But this is not the way it is for us as God's people. Yes, we still cling, uh, and the old Adam still comes uh, cropping up daily in our lives, and we have this, this uh, desire to uh, cling to those old sins. And sometimes we even try and conceal them, but the fact is that when the Word of God reveals to us that sin, uh, then we confess. Then we say, yes, Lord, what you say about me is right. I am a sinner. Forgive me. And then in turn, we say, now, teach me, Lord, to do the right thing. And that's what the Lord's Word does. And that's what the rest of this section is all about. Make me understand the way of your precepts. I will meditate on your wondrous works. Rather than clinging to the dust, clinging to these old pet sins of mine, instead I'm going to look to your Word, Lord. Help me to see the way that I ought to live. 28 again is a little bit of contrition. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Again, we have sorrow over our sin. Our soul melts away when we think about the things that we've done, the guilt that we carry. Um, but we, again, know that the Lord strengthens us through his word, his word of the gospel, which uh, grants us forgiveness for the sake of Christ uh, and his death on the cross. And we also know that the Lord then teaches us in his word how to live properly. And so we pray that the Lord would put false ways away from us and graciously teach us his law, grac graciously teach us how it is that we are to live. Uh, and so in the end, we as the converted who have life given to us by God's word, now we run in the way of the Lord's commandments when he enlarges our heart uh, that we may receive his word, gladly hear and learn it, and live according to his word. Pray God's blessings to you and to your family and friends during this Holy Week. Uh, during Holy Week, go to church. That's what you ought to do. You ought to gladly hear and learn the Word of God uh, as he gives you gracious and, and abundant opportunities to do that uh, during, this, uh, during this Holy Week. 
We'll see you next week on Mondays in the Psalter.